Good afternoon, sir. Umesh here. Uh, good afternoon. Nice convenience call, sir. No issues. No issues. Minutes, Ramesh sir will join, sir. Then we can start. Yes, yes, yes. So, are you? Can you hear my voice? Sir, your audio is not clear, sir. Okay. One second. How about now? Can you hear me now? Hello. Try to share the presentation. Can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. What about my voice? Slide is visible. Usable. Now, Kerala side, yeah, na neera do. Hello. English country. Hello. Ah, na 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 apni na is meeting hai. Yeah, the teacher mana. Uh, how do we, they are not able to hear my voice. How do we, okay. I'm sure, this is shared actually. This is shared. This is maximum. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, none voice cares, sir, yeah? Uh, cares, sir, yes, sir. Correct, I guess. Okay, okay. So all set, right? The video is coming. All set, sir. Nothing from your end. Okay, I'll, I'll join after some time. Yes, sir. At sharp four, we will start, sir. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you.
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸರ್ ಹೇಗಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಫೈನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಶನ್ ಟು ಡೆಲಿವರ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಟುಡೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಎರಡು ನಿಮಿಷ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಸರಿ ಸರ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ನಿಮಗೆ ತಿಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡಿ ಅಂದರು ಅವ್ರೇನೋ ಅರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಕೆಲಸ ಇತ್ತು ಹೊರಟ
ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸರಿ ಸರ್ ಒಂದ್ ಸಲ ಬರ್ಬೇಕು ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಆಗಿ ವಿಶ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಬನ್ನಿ ಬನ್ನಿ ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಬನ್ನಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇದಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಹೌದಾ ಸಿಸ್ಕೋ ವೆಬ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಅವರು ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮೋರ್ ಓವರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅಪ್ಲೋಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಎಸ್ಸಿ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದಿನೇಶ್ ನಾಗೆ ಎ ನಾಗೇಗೌಡ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೆಲಿವರಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಟಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆರೋಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಗಿವ್ ಎ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ introduction about the achievements of dr dinesh uh, dr dinesh nagegoda did his msc in 1998 in biotechnology from the university of agricultural sciences bangalore and later pursued phd in plant molecular biology from university of hong kong after carrying out his postdoc at uh, department of uh, horticulture purdue university usa he returned to india under the prestigious Uh, Ramalinga Swami Pre-Entry Fellowship by Department of Biotechnology, Government of India and third briefly as Assistant Professor at the Indian Institute of Advanced Research, Gandhinagar. In 2009, he joined the most reputed CSIR Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants, Rakhno as a Scientist Fellow and later uh, became Principal Scientist at CSIR CMAP. research institute institute presently uh, uh, dr dinesh is the senior principal scientist and scientist in charge of csir clima research institute bangalore he has produced he has uh, published many research papers in uh, uh, plant biology journals and authored five books uh, chapters and has over 3200 citations uh, he is uh, he has he has guided three postdocs and 12 phd and 11 msc students dr dinesh has handled numerous government of india funded research and uh, served as editorial board of uh, various reputed international journals including journal of horticulture and so many he is also uh, serving now he is the recipient of uh, many awards including indo us he is getting what uh, is fellowship and uh, raman research fellowship of csir and certificate of excellence for outstanding research publication from cmap consequently for 5 years from 2013 to 17 then ramalinga swami fellowship of dbt from 2018 to sorry 2008 to 13 and, uh, and recently he was awarded sir c v raman young scientist award from government of karnataka in the field of agricultural sciences and recently he was he has also been elected as the fellow of national academy of sciences india for his significant contribution to plant science with this very brief introduction may i now request dr dinesh nagegoda to deliver his talk on importance of medicinal and aromatic plants Uh, what do you doctor for your presentation 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh, uh, for uh, your kind introduction about me. And uh, before I start my talk, I'd like to thank uh, the chairman of KSTA, Professor Ayappan, and also the CEO of uh, KSTA, Dr. Ramesh, for giving me a chance to uh, talk about the uh, importance of medicinal and aromatic plants today to, to the uh, college students. So, uh, so before I go into the details of uh, my talk about the medicinal and aromatic plants importance, I, let me briefly tell about the institute where I work. Uh, so it is called as Central, CSIR, Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants, and popularly known as CMAP. And it comes under uh, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, uh, which is uh, uh, under the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. And uh, the headquarters of this institute is uh, located at Lucknow. And uh, this is a one of the frontier research lab of uh, CSAR, uh, which is dedicated to high quality research in the area of uh, biological, chemical, uh, biological and chemical sciences of both medicinal and aromatic plants. And also for extending technologies and services to the farmers and entrepreneurs. So this uh, institute has uh, research centers in different parts of the country. So one is at uh, Bengaluru, uh, where uh, I am working, and the second center is at Hyderabad uh, and Pantanagar and Purara, which are located in the Uttarakhand. So uh, our institute has uh, like uh, uh, set up the centers in different agroclimatic zones of the country so that uh, the medicinal and aromatic plants suitable for the specific regions can be uh, uh, developed and uh, provided to the farmers. So the mission of our institute is uh, empowering farmers and, and herbal industry through uh, research and development in uh, both medicinal and aromatic plants. So coming to medicinal plants, uh, so we work to solve the pharmaceutical, nutraceutical and Ayush industries. And also like in aromatic plants, we uh, do R&D to solve aroma, fragrance, flavor, perfumery, cosmetics and aromatherapy industries. So the main uh, mandate of our institute is to improve uh, the medicinal plants uh, and aromatic plants through genetic improvement uh, and develop uh, uh, modern cultivation practices and also production and chemical processing technologies for economically important medicinal and aromatic plants. So uh, also our uh, institute mandate is to uh, like develop production and distribution of uh, high quality seeds and planting material of cultivars of uh, medicinal aromatic plants and identification and characterization of plant secondary metabolites for affordable health care based on the traditional knowledge and through exploration and also another mandate is uh, to uh, like enhance the production of commercially important secondary metabolites by conventional or molecular inter interventions so we uh, do uh, like uh, R&D uh, uh, with the motto of relevance with excellence. So some of the pipeline areas of our uh, institute are like we do basic research in uh, taxonomy, conservation, domestication, soil science, microbiology, biochemistry, physiology, and molecular biology. And using this knowledge generated from the basic science, we go for uh, technology development in different departments. Uh, like breeding, agronomy, bioprospection, biotechnology, chemical engineering, herbal product development, and so on. So once we develop the technology, we go for technology deployment in terms of extension and outreach activities, or we even uh, transfer the technology that we have developed in the institute to different uh, uh, stakeholders like uh, industries or entrepreneurs. And also we are involved in quality testing of uh, various uh, uh, products that are generated through this uh, 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 technology development. So overall, uh, our institute, that is CSIR CMAP, uh, is involved in uh, high-end research, which is uh, uh, like helping the farmers, society, and also the industry. So coming to the medicinal and aromatic plants, what are these medicinal and aromatic plants? So they are uh, all of you know that they are uh, an important part of our uh, like uh, human wealth, uh, are, uh, I mean, natural wealth, and they serve as a source of uh, important therapeutic agents 
uh, as well as uh, valuable raw materials for manufacturing numerous traditional and modern medicines, uh, including flavors and fragrances. So the history of use of uh, these medicinal and aromatic plants uh, for human well-being well dates back to the beginning of human civilization. Uh, if you go through the human civilization, you will uh, find in all, all our ancient texts uh, the use of uh, these medicinal and aromatic plants for various purposes. So they can be medicinal plants can be defined as the plants that possess therapeutic properties or exert beneficial pharmacological effect on the human or animal body. In other words, a medicinal plant is any plant which in one or more of its organs contains substances that can be used for therapeutic purposes, purposes or uh, which are pre precursors for the synthesis of useful uh, drugs or medicines. Whereas aromatic plants, uh, so an aromatic plant is any plant that contain or produce aromatic compounds in one or more of its organs. It can be leaf, it can be root, or it can be flower, stem, and so on, bark. So these aromatic compounds are generally volatile in nature at room temperature. So uh, all these uh, uh, aromatic compounds, they since you, you have to smell, they have to be volatile in nature. So when you uh, extract them as essential oils, they will they will uh, 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 vaporize and uh, give the characteristic uh, aroma. Uh, so the scented liquid taken from certain plants using steam distillation or pressure, pressure uh, these oils contain natural chemicals that give the plant its essence, uh, which is nothing but specific odor or flavor. So these essential oils are used in perfumes, food flavoring, medicine, and even uh, aromatherapy, which is a uh, very uh, high value industry nowadays. So why these are uh, important? Why to study these medicinal and aromatic plants? So as you can see from this slide, you see various uh, drugs uh, which are derived from uh, uh, medicinal plants. So if you can see here, uh, this is uh, uh, quinine sulfate tablets, which is used in the treatment of malaria, which is derived from the medicinal plant Cinchona officinalis. Same way we have artemisinin, which is also used in the treatment of malaria. And this is derived from a Chinese plant Artemisia anua. Like, likewise, we have Catharanthus roses, which uh, is the only source for the, uh, uh, for the production of pinblastin and vincristine, which are used in the treatment of various cancers. Also Taxus brevifolia, which is a tree species. And the bark of this tree is, uh, is the source of uh, the taxol, which is also used in the treatment of various cancers. Likewise, we have Digitalis purpurea, which produces digoxinin and Papaver somniferum, which, is, which produces morphine. So uh, more than half of the 150 most prescribed medicines have at least one compound derived from plants. So this is a actually a very old number. Uh, the present number is uh, even much more. So you can uh, see the significance of these medicinal plants because they are the main source of uh, various drugs. And still there are many, many uh, unexplored plants that needs to be explored to identify the potent molecules which can be used as drugs. Similarly, aromatic plants, uh, they are the source of uh, 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 aroma compounds are essential oils which are uh, used in our day-to-day -day lives uh, like perfumes, fragrances, like insect repellents, uh, like uh, flavors, food flavors, or even aromatherapy, scented candles, and so on. So in our institute, uh, these are some of the focus crops that we have been working. Uh, in medicinal, we have uh, uh, several uh, plants which we are focusing on both uh, uh, development of uh, varieties as well as uh, uh, cultivation practice, modern cultivation practices as well as processing technology. Similarly, we have uh, certain aromatic plants which we are working. So these are list of uh, plants which are like having a commercial demand. So uh, I will uh, briefly touch upon uh, uh, each plant uh, in the coming slides. So first I'll talk, talk about uh, some of the medicinal plants that we have been working and uh, the, their uh, importance. 
So the periwinkle, uh, it is also called as Madagascar periwinkle because uh, that is the, uh, originally it is sourced from Madagascar. And uh, uh, the botanical name of this plant is Cataranthus roses. And in Kannada, the leader na kasi kani galay antara. Idu yalla kade ni noter bo yalla kade bleite, weed thara bleite. Very hardy plant. And uh, the importance of this plant is uh, it is the only source of uh, uh, two important anti-cancer drugs that is vincristin and vinblastin. Although this plant is a, a source of more than 130 13 indolabrites, which are a class of uh, secondary metabolites. So out of these, uh, the, uh, the, the, they have uh, determined that these two molecules, vincristin and vinblastin, they have uh, anti-cancer uh, ability and they are being used to treat the various cancers and this plant belongs to the Apocynaceae family and you can see here in the in the 1960s first time this windblasting was isolated from the leaf of this plant and uh, now they have uh, like commercially uh, selling them as well born and well pay uh, and similarly like uh, in the year 1963 wind christine was isolated for the first time and it is commercially sold as ampho wind and in the 80s and 90s, uh, they also made uh, semi-synthetic derivatives of uh, uh, windblastin and windcristin, which are called as windose, wind, windesin and uh, vinorelbin. So all these four molecules, they are uh, now being used to treat various cancers, including breast cancer, lung cancer, acute leukemia, and so on. So these molecules are found in the aerial parts of this plant the major major uh, uh, sources from the leaves and uh, the roots of this plant is also known to produce another important molecule that is called ajmalicin and this is an important molecule which is used in the treatment of hypertension so another important plant is uh, sweet worm food uh, it actually it is a chinese uh, uh, origin plant it is a weed and the botanical name for this Artemisia annua, uh, Kannada name Sigli Lairi, Kannada name uh, either, okay, Sweet Roman Golden Thanel Thrail, Artemisia uh, So this belongs to the family Asteraceae. So this plant is important because this uh, leaves of this plant, they accumulate a certain sesquiterpenoid, uh, which is called as Artemisia. Actually, this was there in the, the, the knowledge was uh, there in the uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, traditional Chinese uh, text, uh, which dates back to almost 2000 years. And uh, Dr. Yu Yu Tu, she was a chemist, so she knew that in the text it is mentioned that it is a potent herb for treatment of malaria, but uh, the molecule was not known. So, in the year in, in 1970s, she did a research and uh, using this text, she extracted the molecule and uh, uh, coined the term artemisinin and uh, so this artemisinin now also is being used for the treatment of malaria so uh, the importance of this work was only like uh, rewarded in 2015 when she was awarded nobel prize in the in the uh, area of chemistry So another plant that our institute has been working with is Mukuna. Uh, it is also called as velvet beans. Uh, the botanical name is Mukuna pruriens. So either uh, pods are important uh, uh, part of this uh, plant. So the pods are rich in, uh, uh, especially the seeds. Seeds are rich, uh, rich in L-dopa content, which is a amino acid. And this L-dopa is used in the treatment of uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases such as uh, Parkinson's disease and also it is uh, used uh, to treat male infertility and uh, used as mood lifter and a natural antidepressant and also as a stress reducer. And this plant belongs to the family Fabaceae. We also work on opium poppy. Uh, it is uh, called as Apim Gaskase in Canada. And it belongs to family Papaveraceae. And of course, the grow, uh, cultivation of this is restricted. We need to get a uh, license uh, because this is uh, also a source of uh, uh, psychoactive molecules like heroin uh, and morphine. So, this is uh, uh, opium, is the milky liquid obtained from opium poppy seed. 
seed pods. So you can see here the, when you cut the mature uh, uh, pod, you will you will get this resin, and this is the mil milky liquid that contains these uh, uh, drugs: morphine, codeine, and even heroin. Heroin is a uh, banned drug, uh, whereas morphine and morphine is used very uh, uh, it has to be a prescription medicine because it is a potent painkiller and also can uh, people can exploit uh, to use it as a uh, psychoactive substance so also this uh, uh, plant is a source for another molecule codeine uh, which is used uh, uh, in the preparation of cough syrup so diamorphine is more commonly known as heroin uh, uh, which is a psychoactive substance and it is bad Another uh, important medicinal plant is ashwagandha. Uh, the botanical name for this, uh, well, this uh, plant is Vidania somnifera. And this is a uh, plant of high repute because it is used in almost all Ayurvedic formulation. The main part of this plant is roots. However, the leaves and berries are also used in uh, Ayurvedic formulations. And uh, the medicinal property of this plant is attributed to the presence of uh, uh, unique triterpenoid steroidal lactones. They are called as withanolites. And these are some of the important major withanolites present in, the, in this plant. Withaferin A, withanolite A, withanolite B, uh, withanone, and so on. And uh, this plant uh, belongs to Solanaceae family, uh, same as tomato or tobacco family. Uh, and uh, the extracts of this plant or even the purified molecules, they have been shown to have various uh, pharmacological properties, including anti-inflammatory, immunomodulator, anti-accident, anti-tumor, anti-protozone, antiviral, and so on. So we have Senna, uh, it is called Sonamuki in Canada, and the botanical name is Senna angustifolia, and this uh, plant belongs to Fabaceae. Again, this also grows as a weed, most of you would have seen this plant in the roadsides and this plant is a uh, source of uh, senna glycosides, glycosides which are also called as senocytes. So these senocytes are uh, stimulant laxatives and used as medication to treat constipation. Uh, they work by keeping water in the in intestines which causes movement of uh, the intestines and also these uh, senoglycos senoglycosides are used to, to empty the large intestine before surgery in, in uh, medical practice. Another important uh, medicinal plant is Shatavari. Uh, uh, so botanical name is Asparagus racemosus and it belongs to the family Asparaceae, Asparagaceae. Uh, the main uh, commercial uh, part of this uh, plant is roots, uh, which produces antioxidants, resimophoron, aspergamin A, and resmo resmosol. And this is known to have antiviral properties. It, it is known to boost immune system, can be used in treatment of ulcers, support lactation, and also hormone, hormone balancing. Uh, uh, of course, all of you know Tulsi or holy basil. It is, of course, uh, present in almost all the houses uh, because we worship this uh, plant. Uh, and uh, this plant, uh, uh, the botanical name for this plant is Osimum sanctum, and it belongs to the family Lamesi. And it's, it is well known for its uh, medicinal and, uh, and spiritual properties in Ayurveda. And it is rich in uh, terpenoids and phenyl propanoids. And some of the medicinal uses are it relieves cough, asthma, diarrhea, fever, dysentery, uh, and so on. Kalmeg, uh, uh, the botanical name for this uh, for this plant is Andrographis paniculata. Uh, it is called as Nelabevu in Canada uh, 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 because it is called Bevu because it is highly uh, bitter in taste. It's almost 100 times uh, bitter than the uh, normal neem. So the main uh, part used in this plant is leaves, of course, but uh, even other stem and uh, uh, flowers are also used. So the medicinal properties uh, uh, are attributed to the presence of uh, triterpenoid uh, uh, compounds called as andrographolites. So this is one of the andrographolites, which is represented here. Uh, 
sorry, it is not a triterpenoid, it is diterpenoid. So they are, have strong antiviral properties and they help in uh, boosting the immunity. And also uh, the plant is used to manage the symptoms of the common cold, sinus, sinusitis and allergies. Brahmi, or it is also called as Jalabrahmi in Kannada. Uh, it is grown um, as a weed, uh, in, uh, even in uh, uh, stagnant waters or even in the fields. Uh, and it is uh, used uh, as a tonic for uh, improving the brain activity and helps in difficulties with concentration, impaired memory in healthy individuals. And uh, it is also used for medications for conditions of fit, insanity and depression. And used as a general tonic to fight anxiety and stress. Here also the main part is leaf, uh, which is containing these mucosides. So these are triterpenoid uh, compounds, mucoside A and mucoside B. Uh, they also have other mucosides, but these are the major mucosides. And there are various products which are available in the market uh, uh, in the name of uh, Brahmi. Another important plant, which is also uh, like uh, called as Brahmi, but uh, actual name is uh, Mandukapurni or Kotukula. And this is uh, uh, the botanical name is Centella aseteca, and in Kannada it is called Vandelega because there is only one leaf in a uh, stem. And uh, this plant produces and it belongs to APSC family and it produces uh, again triterpenoids, uh, which are called as uh, aseteocosides. And this plant has been used to treat many conditions for thousands of years in India, China, and Indonesia. And it's used for treating wounds, improve mental clarity, and treat skin conditions such as leprosy and psoriasis. And it also has, is known to have revitalizing properties. Of course, all of you know turmeric. We every day we use it in our uh, food, and this. Uh, uh, belongs to the gingiberisi family and the botanical name is Kurkuma Longa. In Kannada, we call it is Harishna. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the rhizome of this uh, plant is, of course, the commercial part. Uh, that is where you get your uh, uh, turmeric powder. So this turmeric powder, uh, like has, uh, it is a rich source of natural phenox, phenolics, curcumin and curcuminoids. And this is a herbal medicine for rheumatoid arthritis, conjunctivity, skin cancer, and so on. And curcumin has also been shown to have several pharmacological properties such as antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, uh, chemotherapeutic, chemotherapeutic properties, as well as antiviral uh, properties. One more important uh, medicinal plant is cannabis. Uh, the botanical name for this is cannabis sativa. Uh, uh, so in Canada, it is called as Senabu or Ganja. Uh, it belongs to family Cannabaceae. So cannabis is also known as marijuana, uh, produces cannabinoids. Uh, there is a report that uh, at least 66 different cannabinoids are present in its flowers and uh, also leaves. In addition, it, this uh, plant is also known to produce uh, characteristic aroma notes like in terms of uh, monoterpenes. The most well known among these uh, cannabinoids is the delta tetra hydrocannabinol, which is called as delta 9 THC. So, this is the main psychoactive ingredient in cannabis. Uh, so, when plants contain more than 0.3% uh, of this THC, they are called as uh, uh, the ganja. Uh, so, if it is less than 0.3%, they are considered as industrial or medicinal hemp. So, the medicinal cannabis uh, has uh, uh, high amounts of cannabinoids and less amounts of uh, this THC. So, this is used in uh, reducing anxiety, inflammation and relief pain. And also, it is known to control nausea and vomiting uh, caused by cancer chemotherapy. And there are some studies which show that uh, this uh, cannabinoids kills, kills cancer cells and also slow tumor growth. Uh, also, these uh, cannabinoids or uh, the decoction is used to relax tight muscles in people with uh, muscular uh, dystrophy. Uh, also, this uh, plant is, uh, the extracts from this plant is known to stimulate appetite and improve weight gain in people with cancer and AIDS. 
So Indian coleus or Makandi Beru in Kannada. So the botanical name is Coleus barbatus. So here uh, the roots are the commercial part and the roots are known to produce a specific uh, diterpenoid called as force coli. And this is uh, known to uh, uh, used for uh, treating high blood pressure, chest pain, asthma, dry eye, and many other conditions. And forcecoline is also known to aid weight loss by helping pro producing enzymes called as lipase and uh, adenylate cyclase. So this is the structure of forcecoline. And these are various products which are available in the market. So that was about uh, some of the important uh, medicinal crops that uh, we have been working in our institute. And uh, coming to the, some of the focus crops of aromatic in nature, uh, so peppermint, of course, uh, all of you would have smelt it or tasted this uh, uh, leaf. Uh, so it is called pepper pudina in Canada, and the botanical name is mentha piperata, and it belongs to Lamiaceae family. And the major contents of these uh, uh, leaves are uh, menthol and menthol. And this uh, the essential oil of these leaves is composed of 40% menthol, and uh, uh, which is responsible for the cooling sensation when uh, applied on skin, and about 20% menthol, which imparts the unique aroma note. So this uh, oil is used for uh, strong minty fragrance. It is used in the flavoring of tea, ice cream, candy, alcoholic beverages, chewing gum, and so on, uh, including toothpaste. Uh, Another mint is uh, field or wild mint, uh, the botanical name is mentha arvensis and major composition of this oil is uh, menthol, 80% uh, of the oil contains menthol and the leaves are used to make tea that aids in digestion or treats cold. Mint extracts are also used to flavor food, drinks, cough medicines and grapes. So more or less similar uh, uh, applications uh, that of uh, peppermint. So coming to uh, another important plant, uh, lemongrass, uh, and it is scientifically, scientifically called as Sembopoga plexuosus. And it belongs to Poaceae family, which is also a family of uh, rice. And the uh, commercial part of this plant is uh, leaves. Uh, the, all the aerial part is used. And the major composition of this uh, uh, essential oil is uh, the monoterpene uh, Citral. Citral is a composition of both geranial and neral. These are monoterpene aldehydes. So this is called as lemongrass because it smells like lemon. And uh, it has wide industrial uses uh, as raw material for perfumery and in, confe in confectionery industries. And this citral is also used in the synthesis of vitamin A, lycopene, ionine and uh, methyl ionine uh, to mask the smell of smoke. So methyl ionine is uh, generally used to mask the smell of smoke. And also there are various uh, products in terms of tea, uh, uh, herbal tea and so on. Another important grass is Pamarosa, Anchi uh, and the botanical name is Simbopogon martini. And here, uh, of course, again, the aerial part is the commercial part, but the maximum content of this uh, uh, aroma is present in the flowers. Uh, so the uh, main ingredient is geranial, which is a monoterpene. Uh, so it also uh, smells like a uh, rose. So it, it has rose because of the presence of geranium, it smells like rose. And uh, uh, this geranial has wide, wide industrial uses uh, as raw material for the production of rose oxide and also in uh, various uh, uh, products like perfumes, soaps and so on. So third uh, uh, most important uh, grass, aromatic grass is citronella grass. Uh, the botanical name is Simbopogon winterianus. Uh, in Canada, it is citronella volvontani uh, anthrae. This uh, contains uh, maximum amount, uh, amount of citronella acetate and uh, geranial acetate. Uh, so this has a crisp lemony aroma, which removes bad odor and leaves behind, a, uh, they, they, they leave behind a pleasant fresh smell. And essential oil rich, is rich in monoterpenes, which is already I told about this. And also, this essential oil of this plant is a naturally occurring insect and animal animal repellent.
uh, another uh, plant belonging to the grass family is uh, vetiver uh, this botanical name is chrysopogon zizinoids in kannada lli idana lavancha ant heltare so this uh, uh, essential oil is derived from the roots of this plant unlike uh, other grasses uh, the commercial part is the root so this uh, vetiver oil is uh, rich in sesquiterpene alcohols like fusinol fusilol uh, including uh, various other uh, compounds like vetin vetivon zizinoid and so on so this oil is used for relieving stress uh, as well as for emotional trauma and shock and for repelling lice and insects and uh, it is also used in treatment of arthritis strings and burns uh, vetiver oil is also used in aromatherapy for treatment of nervousness insomnia and joint and muscle pain and this oil uh, since it has a unique aroma it is also used in high end perfumes as well as uh, in flavoring uh, in food industry and also in pan masala uh, also the uh, roots are used in various uh, making of various uh, handicrafts which you can see here uh, geranium oops. hello hello can you hear me Sir. Okay, the, the presentation is coming, right? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, the next important uh, aromatic plant is geranium. Another uh, one geranium, botanical name is Pelargonium graviolens, and it belongs to the family Geraniaceae. And this plant uh, is known to produce uh, monoterpene rich essential oil that is uh, geraniol and citronella. Uh, and this is also used in high end perfumery and flavoring because of the unique uh, aroma it imparts. And oil is used in products uh, aiming to reduce wrinkles and signs of aging. And also, the oil has calming and soothing effect on irritated skin. And also, it is, uh, uh, has a uh, market in uh, flavoring, uh, food, uh, food, uh, flavoring uh, of food and also in pan masala. Pacholi, uh, is another plant uh, the leaf of which produces unique uh, uh, sesquiterpenes the major majority of the essential oil contains pacholol uh, or it is called as uh, pacholi alcohol so this uh, pacholi oil is used for treatment of uh, skin conditions such as dermatitis acne or dry cracked skin it's also known to ease the symptoms of conditions like colds headaches and stomach upset uh, this oil is also like uh, used in high grade fragrances and perfumes because of its unique uh, uh, note. Also, this oil uh, is used in uh, used, used as flavors in foods like candies, baked foods, and beverages, including uh, also pan masala industry uses this oil. Davana, uh, I think uh, most people in and around Bangalore would have seen this plant because this is mostly grown in uh, uh, like in and around Bangalore only other places uh, this uh, the condition climatic conditions are not suitable for this plant so this is uh, botanically called as Artemisia pellens and uh, the family is Lamiaceae so this is a uh, actually the plant which is from the same genus uh, uh, where I mentioned about Artemisia annua which produces Artemisin in antimalarial drug uh, so this uh, is uh, the same genus but the species is different so this is used for aromatic purpose whereas artemisia annua is used for the medicinal purpose so this uh, mostly the uh, flowers produces uh, the sesquiterpene lactones called as devonone and uh, the oil essential oil is regarded as being anti-infectious soothing to dry uh, rough skin and also it has a stimulating uh, effect to the endocrine system Davana is also a popular uh, essential oil uh, in the perfume industry where it is capable of making a scent unique to the individual. Uh, it is also extensively used in flavoring of food, cold drinks, liquor and in pastry industries. So this is uh, uh, the structure of Davanon which is the major composition in the oil. Another important plant is clary sage, uh, salvia scleria, uh, sage and 
This also belongs to Lamiaceae family, and the leaf extracts are reported to be used for relieving uh, various conditions like asthma, digestive problems, loss of appetite, gastritis, and so on. The oil is rich in monoterpenes, uh, which is used as a fragrance component in soaps and cosmetics. And uh, again, the oil is also uh, known to help uh, to alleviate stress and calm, uh, calm the mind when used in aromatherapy. Another important uh, uh, aspect of this plant is it is a source of scleria, which is a diterpenoid, uh, and it's used in the synthesis of semi uh, used as a substrate for synthesis of oily expensive amber grease. Amber grease is a solid uh, waxy substance which is produced uh, by sperm whale uh, in the intestine. So this is the amber grease. Uh, they call it a sperm whale vomit. And it has a very, very, uh, one kg of this amber grease can cost up to one crore to two crores. So, so instead of depending on the sperm whale, we can use a scleral uh, producing this leaf to semi-synthetically make amber grease. So people are using this as a, uh, a substrate to uh, replace this amber grease, uh, which is, uh, of course, we have to depend on this sperm whale. So another uh, important plant, uh, aromatic plant is chamomile, which is mostly grown in the uh, Himalayan region. And the botanical name is Metricaria chamomile. And uh, the major constituents of this oil, uh, uh, oil is derived from the flowers. And the major constituents are terpenoids, uh, mostly bisabolol and its acid azulines. Uh, essential oils of this uh, plant are used extensively in cosmetics and aromatherapy and also they are uh, used in herbal tree preparations. Uh, and uh, chamomile preparations are known to uh, be used for many human ailments such as hay fever, inflammation, muscle spasms, uh, menstrual disorders, insomnia, etc. Uh, so rose uh, gulabi is also a, one of the important aromatic plants. So the rose damascena, uh, this is the botanical name and belongs to Rosaceae family. And rose essential oil is used in perfumes and food, food flavoring and aromatherapy. Tea made from this rose petal strengthens the digestive process and it is excellent for skin care and hair care. The extract of the rose petals is known to act as antidepressant, antibacterial, antifungal, antiseptic, etc. The essential oil contains rose oxide and geranium. So that was about uh, various uh, aromatic crops that our institute has been working and uh, these are some of the improved varieties that we have developed over the last several years. About 160 varieties we have developed uh, in CSARC map and these are some of the most popular varieties successfully adapted by farmers in, in and in industry. On the right side you can see this includes both uh, medicinal and aromatic plants. And also our institute has been uh, instrumental in uh, using the essential oil and our herb, our herbs for making the products. So you can see these are various skin care formulations that our uh, institute has come up and hair care formulations, pain reliever formulations, disinfectants, nutraceutical formulations, mosquito repellent formulations and so on. Uh, even uh, we have made some products in health and hygiene. So all these uh, products are, uh, details of these products are there in our website to go through and all these products are there for uh, commercial licensing. So coming to some aspects uh, uh, about the uh, science of medicinal and aromatic plants. So these medicinal and aromatic plants are so termed due to their ability to produce certain specific metabolites, uh, which are called as secondary or specialized metabolites that have medicinal or aromatic properties. So not all plants can be called as medicinal or aromatic plants, only when they have certain uh, uh, characterized metabolites which have medicinal or aromatic properties can be called as medicinal or aromatic plants. So as you see that uh, all these uh, medicinal or aromatic plants, they produce unique uh, molecules called as secondary or specialized metabolites. So in plants, there are uh, two types of metabol metabolism, uh, like primary metabolism, which is uh, required for the normal uh, growth, respiration, storage, reproduction, or in other, word, other words, it is required for the survival of the plant. Whereas secondary metabolism, uh, which is also called a specialized metabolism, 
is a term for pathways that produce small molecule products called as uh, secondary metabolites, which are not absolutely required for the survival of the organism, uh, but uh, these provide uh, overall fitness to the plant, ecological fitness to the plant. So these secondary metabolites, they function in defense against herbivores, which can be insects, mollusks, vertebrates, by uh, repelling or deterring or providing a toxic effect or even by growth inhibition. And also they act as uh, de uh, like uh, they function as defense against microbes, viruses, which include uh, like viruses, bacteria, fungi, by inhibiting the growth or even uh, importing the toxicity. Also, they are involved in defense uh, against compet competing plants by inhibition of germination and uh, growth of seedlings. So these secondary metabolites also are involved in attraction of pollinating insects, seed dispersing animals, root nodule bacteria, and also adapted specialist herbivores. They are also known to provide uh, UV protection to the plant and also they are involved in nitrogen storage. So, so far, uh, uh, like more than 200,000 different compounds have been uh, characterized in plants. However, the real number is certainly much higher because uh, so far we have uh, only touched about 20 to 30 percent of plants. Uh, so there are still many more plants to be investigated and many more compounds to be identified, which will have a definitely uh, a huge uh, value to the human health as both medicinal and aromatic compounds. So how are these uh, specialized or uh, secondary metabolites formed in the plants? So I will just briefly tell how, how are these formed. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, these are various primary metabolic pathways which are required for the survival of the plant. So these primary metabolic pathways, they uh, form a pool of metabolites uh, and these pool of metabolites further undergo secondary transformations, which involves various uh, uh, biochemical reactions like ligation, cyclization and so on, uh, leading to the formation of a core set of molecules called as molecular starters. So these molecular, molecular starters by themselves can be already alkaloids, phenyl propanoids, terpenoids, polyketides, and so on. Or they can further undergo uh, uh, various biochemical uh, uh, reactions uh, that is called tertiary transformations involving glycosylation, methylation, acylation, phenylation, oxidation, reduction, and so on, resulting in a magnificent diversity of uh, uh, secondary metabolites having various uh, di diverse and uh, varied structures. So, as I mentioned, these uh, secondary metabolites are derived from primary metabolism. For example, here you can see that fatty acid metabolism, sugar metabolism, amino acid metabolism, these are all the primary metabolic pathways. So, secondary metabolites like polyacetylenes are derived from fatty acid metabolism. Likewise, isoprenoids and polyketides are derived from sugar metabolism and phenylpropanoids, alkaloids, glucosinolides, lignans, coumarins, uh, they are all derived from amino acid metabolism. So certain metabolites, secondary metabolites, they are uh, highly complex in nature and they can be uh, derived from the condensation of intermediates from two different primary metabolic pathways. For example, you can see here, flavonoids and steel beans, they are derived from the condensation of intermediates from sugar metabolism as well as amino acid metabolism. So although we call them as primary and secondary metabolism, it is uh, practically impossible to demarcate between the uh, two metabolic processes. Uh, as This is a very simplified view, but uh, in reality, it is a highly complex process. So also uh, the recent work demonstrates that many of the secondary metabolites ha have a regulatory role and some are demonstrated precursor for primary metabolites. So, uh, so far we were thinking that these secondary metabolites have only the secondary uh, properties uh, as against the primary metabolites, but recent work shows that they can regulate plant growth, development and defense, and also they are uh, known to uh, uh, known to be integrated, reintegrated into primary metabolism. So here you can see, for example, uh, these glucosinolates, although they are classified as secondary metabolites, they have various uh, functions in primary metabolism like uh, sulfur or energy storage, regulation of stomatal opening, root growth, regulation regulation of phenolics and so on. Similarly, benzo benzoxazinides, they also 
are termed as secondary metabolites, but the recent studies show that they are involved in nitrogen or energy storage, iron chelation, root microbial regulation, regulation of phenolics, callus uh, regulation, and so on. So how are these uh, secondary metabolites formed? They are formed mainly in the cytosol, but there are reports. Uh, I think I am running out of time, so I'll, I'll quickly uh, try to explain these slides. Uh, so uh, mostly the uh, most of the secondary metabolic pathways are uh, they occur in the cytosol, but uh, also other uh, subcellular compartments are known to produce uh, these. Uh, secondary metabolites like endoplasmic reticulum is known to produce uh, 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 like uh, certain lipophilic compounds chloroplast uh, is known to produce uh, terpenes and alkaloids and mitochondria some amines corneum uh, alkaloids and also vesicles are known to produce some alkaloids and also vacuoles they are known to accumulate alkaloids cyanogens glucosinolates and so on and also certain uh, structures in the plant they are known to accumulate these uh, secondary metabolites so most of the hydrophil hydrophilic secondary metabolites are uh, accumulated or produced in vacuoles like in vacuole you can see alkaloids saponins glycosides so on lattice these are the structures present in some of the plants like pepper and all uh, other species so they are known to accumulate some alkaloids cardiac glycosides and so on also apoplast or cell walls they are known to accumulate tannins and lipophilic secondary metabolites are known to be produced or accumulated in critical trichome resin ducts lattice oil cells and plastic membranes so all these uh, secondary metabolites are specialized metabolites they are broadly categorized into three chemically distinct groups so they are uh, the largest of them all is terpenes which comprises various uh, uh, subclasses like monoterpenes, esketerpenes, diterpenes, depending on the number of carbon units present in their backbone. And the second uh, most uh, widely occurring uh, class of compound secondary uh, metabolites are phenolics, which consists of flavonoids, isoflavonoids, coumarins, and so on. And uh, the third uh, class of compounds is nitrogen or sulfur containing compound, which consists of alkaloids, indoles, glucosinolates, and isothiocyanates. So these uh, specialized metabolites in plants are produced in small quantities, in either in species-specific, tissue-specific, stage-specific, or uh, response-specific manner. So because of that, uh, the uh, production of these molecules will be uh, highly cumbersome and uh, resulting in uh, high cost of production. So what we do in our lab? Uh, in my lab, we actually we study the biochemical pathways. Uh, of course, all of you may be knowing what is a biochemical pathway. So a biochemical pathway is a, a metabolic pathway and involves a series of enzyme-mediated uh, reactions where the product of one reaction is used as a substrate in the next reaction. So these e enzymes are coded by uh, uh, G, I mean, unique gene. Uh, so we study the biochemical pathway and then we go for isolation and characterization of the gene or genes involved in the pathway. So of course, all of you may be knowing what is a gene. So the gene is a basic unit of heredity that occupies a specific location on a chromosome. And each gene consists of nucleotides arranged in a linear manner. And most genes code for a specific protein or segment of protein leading to a particular characteristic or function. And once we characterize and isolate the gene, we use this uh, knowledge to improve the production of target secondary metabolites or specialized met metabolite. It can be a, uh, one molecule or group of molecules. So we use uh, uh, various biotechnological uh, tools uh, uh, to enhance the production of these molecules. Either it can be uh, a production of transgenic plants or cell cultures or even uh, uh, generating the molecules in the heterologous microbial pores. So this is a kind of a gist of uh, the activities which we do in our lab, uh, in, our, in my biotechnology lab. So as I said, all these uh, secondary metabolites are produced in uh, very small quantities. So we can increase the produ production of these uh, secondary metabolites provided we, as I mentioned already, we know the various biochemical steps and the genes involved in the pathway. So, uh, so we have to properly understand the pathway steps committed or rate limiting steps or regulatory factors thereby we can engineer the cell cultures or the, or the 
plan by metabolic engineering or if we know the entire pathway uh, and entire steps and all the genes of the pathway we can put the entire pathway into the yeast or e coli which are microbial systems uh, where you can produce the molecule of interest in a very short time compared to the plant where you have to depend on sometimes six months to one year or even sometimes to 20 to 30 years like for example in sandalwood you have to depend on the uh, like uh, uh, for almost 20 years to get the sandalwood oil so i'll just briefly tell what is metabolic engineering so it is uh, referred to as the directed improvement of cellular properties through the modification of specific biochemical reaction or group of uh, i mean uh, a set of reactions by the introduction of uh, uh, by the use of recombinant dna technology so there are various strategies uh, in metabolic engineering if you can see here uh, so suppose this is a metabolic pathway and we are interested in production of uh, target molecule c and we know that there is a limitation of the, the uh, enzyme which is uh, involved in the conversion of p to c so what we can do is we were, we can by through biotechnological approach we, we can over express this uh, gene involved in conversion of b to c thereby increasing uh, the production of target molecule similarly we can sometimes in in certain pathways we have limitation of the precursors so in in such scenario we can increase the expression of the gene involved in the production of precursor thereby we can increase the precursor thereby automatically increasing the production of the target molecule similarly uh, we can uh, suppose this is a pathway here we have uh, uh, two uh, the target molecule is c but the ultimate product is d uh, whereas d is not desirable for us so what we can do is through biotechnological intervention we can block the conversion of c to d thereby enhancing the accumulation of c and reducing the production of d and also we can redirect the, redirect the common precursors in a biochemical pathway so here we can see that uh, we have end products e and d and here again we are not interested in d but we are interested in production of e so what we can do is uh, we can block this step thereby we can increase the precursor c that way we can increase the formation of the target molecule e and also sometimes we can also adopt over expression over expression of this particular gene which is involved in conversion of c to e thereby further enhancing the production of target molecule e also we can use uh, master regulators so there are certain genes called as transcription factors these transcription factors they are known to regulate uh, one or many steps in the pathway so thereby when we introduce these transition factors it affects the expression of the genes thereby increasing the enzyme activity enzyme activity thereby enhancing the production of the target molecules also we can increase in, in, in introduce uh, genes uh, transition factor genes which are known to affect most of the pathway steps thereby we can further enhance the production of target molecules also we can uh, in some pathways we can uh, introduce the uh, entire pathway into different cellular comp compartments here you can see for example the sesquiterpenoids are generally produced in the cytosol where the precursor flux is very low whereas uh, the monoterpenoids are produced in the plastid where the precursor flux is high so what we can do is we can introduce the entire sesquiterpenoid, sesquiterpenoid pathway into the plastid thereby we can enhance the uh, production of the target molecules as i mentioned earlier if we know the entire bio biochemical pathway steps and the genes we can introduce the entire pathway into different hosts it can be either microbial uh, involving e coli or yeast or it can be a different plant like tobacco so thereby we can produce the molecule of interest in a short time and in a larger quantity so these are the different platforms which we can use for metabolic engineering homologous plants so this is a homologous plant is, is the host itself. So here gene or genes of a pathway are overexpressed or silenced in the host plant itself so that we can achieve a higher production of the target molecule. Heterologous plants is like here we use gene or, gene or genes of a pathway or entire pathway in a different plant. So it can be like a, a, a Artemisia nova pathway pathway expressed in the tobacco tobacco so thereby increasing the artemisinin production in, in tobacco 
or it can it can be heterologous microbes as i mentioned earlier it can be e coli or yeast which are most widely used as a uh, preferred host for the production of target molecules so these are the some of the examples where the uh, researchers have engineered the production of the target molecules so the artemisinin in, which is involved in the which is used for the treatment of uh, malaria so the entire pathway has been introduced in the yeast and here instead of depending on uh, the uh, plant and which has to be grown in large area uh, and you have to wait for 9 to 10 months to uh, get the artemis in here within one week uh, in the engineered yeast strain you can get the uh, um, artemis in within one week Similarly, cannabinoids, uh, as I mentioned, uh, cannabinoids are having a very highly medicinal uh, properties. So here also they have shown that uh, the entire pathway is introduced in the yeast and they have been able to produce cannabinoids as well as TH THCA. So these are some of the companies which are commercially exploiting this uh, metabolic engineering to produce various aromatic compounds as well as medicinal compounds. So here one example is taxidine. Taxadine is a precursor for taxol, which is produced in the uh, tree taxus brevifolia, which is also called a specific U. Here, uh, the uh, gram, I mean, uh, bark is the source of uh, this taxol. So, one gram of uh, taxol is produced using 750 kg of dry bark, which is almost like two to three, two to three trees, which you have to sacrifice to get this one gram of taxol. And this taxol is an anti-cancer uh, uh, drug. So what researchers have done is they have engineered the entire pathway uh, leading to the formation of taxidine and they have produced in E. coli. So they could achieve one gram per liter of E. Uh, e. coli. And this taxidine produced in E. coli is semi-synthetically converted to taxol and used as a drug for treatment of cancer. So this is the uh, uh, power of uh, metabolic engineering where you can, if you know the pathway you can introduce into a microbial system and produce uh, and that's that's how you can also uh, not depend on the tree species or uh, even the plants which require a la la large cultiva cultivable area and also of course uh, uh, sandalwood uh, oil is also having a very uh, high value in in various perfumes and uh, other industries so here also now the pathway is being elucidated and it is possible to introduce this pathway into the yeast system and we can produce the sandalwood oil uh, within a matter of 15 uh, week or 15 days rather than depending on the tree which which has to grow for 15 to 20 years to get the mature hardwood so that was about uh, uh, the uh, importance of medicinal and aromatic plants and uh, some of the research uh, importance of research uh, why we need to study these medicinal and aromatic plants so i'll uh, just touch upon uh, some of the fellowships uh, available in science stream uh, if you are looking generally people uh, like uh, after 12th they there is only like they look for medicine or uh, engineering but uh, there is also of course requirement of uh, intelligent students who are coming into the science stream so the government of india has introduced some of the fellowships to attract the students talented students to the science stream so some of such schemes are kvpy this is called uh, the kishore vijnanik protsahan yojana exam so it is conducted by the indian institute of science bangalore and the candidate who clear the aptitude round are called for the interview round and the students who qualify this kvpy uh, also known as the KVPY Fellows, they receive a monthly scholarship up to the pre-PhD level, uh, about 5,000 per month. So this is a very uh, uh, good fellowship. I think all of you students should take up this uh, exam. And uh, uh, if you are uh, really interested to come to Science Stream, this is a very good uh, fellowship to uh, get. Also, we have a NEST scheme where National Entrance Screening Test it's a test for students seeking admission to National Institute of Science, Education, MISER, Governation and University of Mumbai. Uh, so here at least 60% marks in aggregate are equivalent during class 12 examination from any recognized body in India is required to take this exam. So this is also having a very good fellowship. So uh, the details, detail, uh, more details you can find in their website. You can just Google KVPY or NEST so you can get more details. Also, you can uh, take uh, 
uh, entrance tests test conducted by Central University, that is CUET. Uh, so this is for all the undergraduate courses in science, arts, and commerce, uh, and also the respective uh, state or private university entrance exams can be taken to enter into the science streams. So yeah, that was about it. Thank you very much for patient listening. So if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to take. Doctor, thank you very much for a very interesting and scholarly talk. Tumba common figure plants got but then I'm idea I lila. Mailed Mela got it. They are so useful to us. Thank you. It is also a very uh, learning experience for us also. Even though I am also from Agriculture University, from fishery stream, I was not aware of <laughs> aromatic yeah. plants. Thank you very much for a very wonderful talk. Thank you. I'm sure, I'm sure students would have got a lot of uh, information from your uh, talk to broaden the horizon of their knowledge. On behalf of KSTA and all the participants, thank you very much. Uh, as of now, there are no questions because from YouTube they can't uh, mail any yeah. questions. If they mail any questions later, we'll be forwarding it to you for your kind of uh, I will be happy to answer those. Yeah, thank yes, you. Sir. Thank, thank you, you very much, much sir, for your kind time and uh, wonderful lecture. Great for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.